What's up, Lorehounds? It's Koopy here for MOBA Monday. We are going to be in the wide world of Blizzard Entertainment. Um, there's a couple different reasons we're diving back into Heroes of the Storm, hence the wide world and not a specific one. Um, and, and, and least of which is its slow progress towards probably releasing soon. Um, it's a lot of different things, but uh, chief among them is the fact that the company is going to be stopping the sale of its Founders Pack, at least in its current incarnation. You know, Blizzard may do something, who knows what. But the fact that they are stopping the sale of it tomorrow, uh, April 7th, uh, Tuesday, April 7th, during maintenance, is kind of indicative that it's probably coming out soon. They did have a quick shift from alpha to closed beta. Maybe now it's just going to be, you know, the assumption would be that it's just going to be open beta soon. I'm not saying tomorrow uh, by any means. But it's just, you know, a couple different things are coming together. We have another new god. Um, we have uh, the Tomb of the Spider Queen as a uh, new map. Um, we also, that that is culminating in Heroes of the Storm getting its own lore and its own universe, uh, which was a very interesting take and I think very smart for the design team over there, Dustin Browder and, and all those guys that here is doing Heroes of the Storm, to not have us start with, you know, StarCraft maps or Diablo, fully themed Diablo maps and stuff like that, because it really is supposed to be this, if not taken serious universe of the universes coming together, then at least you wouldn't want to predispose us to think of particular things in the game modes. Um, so now they can they can kind of play with whatever they want game design wise, and then down the road they can start actually building the the maps that fit the universe and maybe would play how you would expect. I don't know, like a an Arathi Basin or um, you know just any other Diablo sanctuary areas and stuff like that that would fit more the mold of the game the game universe it's based on. Um, that being said, uh, there's been a conversation. Quite a bit of conversation over in the the Reddit or the subreddit um, around the balance of the champions and how they're well the heroes and how they're being distributed through the universes. Um, Warcraft is by far the main one of all the uh, current available heroes, and to me it kind of makes sense. Um, it certainly, I, I would say, has the the best known lore. Uh, StarCraft, while it does have its huge heroes, um, they're not. There's not nearly as plentiful. I mean, there's you know, 12 million people play WoW. Um, I don't know how many Star, how many units StarCraft 2 sold. I I don't think it's 12 million. Um, but that's 12 million people that play WoW and have bought numerous expansions and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm going to go out on a pretty strong limb, like tree size limb, and say Warcraft is probably the best known universe. So focusing there, not necessarily good balance lore-wise, uh, is probably safest in recognition, uh, which is obviously important. The, the, other, the flip side of that is like being able to build heroes to fit the roles that are needed in the game. That's obviously super important for balance and that kind of thing. Um, but we've seen that and, and I think Sylvanas, of all people from the Warcraft universe, um, she's the Banshee Queen. She's known as an archer, but they built her as pure siege damage. Uh, so she is a very CG hero, thanks to the abilities they chose and stuff like that to, to focus on. And she's a bit Warcraft 3E -y in her options, but um, it's just the way they're building out the heroes doesn't necessarily... Th there's flexibility in the lore. To build out the heroes as needed in their roles that are needed. I don't know if we'll ever see, ever see like, um, you know, say a fire mage Jaina. Like, that doesn't seem to be any reason to do that when they have the amount of universes they have. And who knows, maybe we'll start seeing Overwatch come to the Heroes of the Storm soon. Um, the other bit of information that causes us to play Heroes of the Storm is, of course, we haven't played it in a little while. Uh, so that's, that's of interest. Uh, but again, I do want to reiterate the Founders Pack is going on, is going to disappear uh, apparently tomorrow. Whether it's going to be replaced by something different or if it truly is 
you know, a precursor to open beta or maybe an upcoming launch or something like that. Um, that's clearly just rumor, but I think there's some certainly meat on that rumor of, of why that would be the case. Uh, and of course, I, I, if you guys have followed, I had a discussion before. I still don't find that the Founders Pack is worth the money to me. And that's partly because I was lucky enough to get into the game already. So if you were lucky enough to get in the game already, the founders, the value of the founders pack definitely goes down, which is because it gives you instant access. Um, now, otherwise, it just it doesn't give me all the heroes forever. Like I like that kind of pack. I'd rather pay Blizzard 30, 40 bucks or whatever just outright, and then know I own the stuff um, rather than you know the ten dollars here and there. And of course, that does bring me to the next point which was um the expensive murky skin uh so it's 15 bucks i'm not sure if it's gonna be up anymore that i can show it to you oh no there he is funny bunny murky very cool skin super unique uh typical murky style i do love the come on spin around for me buddy no stay there the egg with the mustache pretty awesome i don't know if that's supposed to be someone or something i might be missing there but as you can see, quite expensive. Uh, you get murky and this skin for 15 for the pack. Um, but yeah, it's it's for Noble Garden, you know, the WoW Easter celebration. Super cute. I mean, come on, look at those googly eyes. Very cute. But again, I it just Welcome. to me, value's not there. Um, it's one hero for one hero you can unlock for free fairly easily. Yes, that skin's awesome. Um, and you're only going to be able to buy it, I assume. I assume you can't. Well, I mean, I know you can't uh, earn it that way, but 10 bucks for a skin. Oh, I just can't do it. I guess I'm just too cheap. I'm not sure what it is, but 10 bucks for a skin is pretty expensive. Cup of coffee? Solid? Like, you know, not going to go to Dunkin' Donuts later? Fine, I'll buy a murky skin. 10 bucks? That's pretty crazy. Wow, that's an awesome. I did not see that Nazebo skin get released. Alrighty, anyways, we are going to get in the game. That's enough of our opening speech. Uh, once again, I am It's Cooper streaming for lorehound.com. Don't forget that if you do want this Founders Pack, now is the time to get it. It stops uh, sale tomorrow, Tuesday, April 7th. Um, it'll get you into the play immediately. Again, if the rumor pans out that, you know, the fact that that's going away is leading to open beta. It's even less valuable uh, if you just wait a day. Otherwise, yeah. Pajama Party Lost Vikings. Nice.